Yo, welcome back everyone to another Stu42 Minecraft video. Today, part two of bee breeding. So, last uh, episode you would have seen a brief how-to on how to get started uh, with breeding bees. These are the three apiaries we were working with last time. Uh, as you can see, these common drones that we bred to last time, they're now stacking. I've, I just keep putting these through like this, and that'll just keep building more and more drones. This one here, same thing. This, remember, was a, I think it was a sorceress princess. This is now completely turned into a forest princess. And here is the original stack of drones and forest princess that we had. So there we go. That was a, that was a pretty successful uh, cross to the common last time. So this time what I'm going to go over is the advanced machines and what you can do with those instead. So one of the bees that I've been looking for for a while, I, depending on how long you've been watching my series, uh, I did a bunch of nuclear stuff over in that building, quickly found I was running out of lapis. So one of the things I'm really wanting to get is lapis bees. Uh, as I've said, bees, they're a bit cheaty, but you know they, they fulfill a purpose if you need a lot of things. So uh, lapis is what we're aiming for. We need water and resilient to do that. Uh, I've already got water and resilient. Uh, in fact, I've got a water drone where we're going to be doing the breeding. Uh, I don't have um, a second resilient princess though. So, actually, bef before we do that, I might just go over the isolator, synthesizer, and purifier. So let's grab let's grab a spare bee from somewhere. Let's grab. Now I've got meadows, modest. Oblivion drone. I'm only going to use three of those. I've got a steadfast drone. Oblivion princess. Excellent. Okay, so let's grab these three oblivion drones. We've left some there so that we can do some breeding with them. But what you want to do with these, so now that you've probably, uh, hopefully you've taken my advice in the last episode, you've bred up and you've gotten to the imperial bees. The imperial bees, of course, needed for the royal jelly to make the serum vials. Serum vials are then, of course, needed to make the inoculator and also in the isolator to put the empty serum vials in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop these three in here. This will charge up and we'll start getting some serums out the other side. Hopefully one of those serums is going to be the Oblivion Species Serum. Uh, you'll also get a bunch of other traits. So if we go to this chest here, this is where I've stored a bunch of serums that I've previously got. So we're going to want uh, water and resilient for our next cross. Now, as I said, I've got plenty of water drones there. I only have one resilient princess and I tend to not like using that. So over here, I think it is, yep, we have a resilient serum. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that serum and make, uh, I tend to use rocky princesses because we get a lot of them anyway. So it's a pristine one, which means it should last longer. And then what we're going to do is in the inoculator, we're going to put the rocky princess and the resilient species. Now this has a chance with every run through to change one of the traits of the rocky. So because there's always an active and a passive trait on each of them, uh, the genetic twins is uh, one's recessive and one's dominant. So dominant and recessive gene traits uh, need to be changed. So at the minimum, this is going to have to go twice through uh, to change this rocky bee completely into a resilient bee. Now back at our isolator. Wow, it's scanned all three bees already. We have nocturnal, slowest, humid, and slowest flowering. Now, none of those are useful to us. We have, I've got all of these already. So what you can do with these serum, because you know, you've probably not got a lot of royal jelly to begin with, we can just put these into a furnace and that'll turn them back into a standard empty serum. But that's the idea of it anyway. So once you, once you put that in there, a couple of times and you get the serum that you need, you'll end up with one that looks like, let's grab the uh, beatific effect. That's one of the effects that bees can give you. Uh, so, And I think that's a heal, a healing effect. So that one's empty with average quality. From there, you'll need the synthesizer. 
Now, what the synthesizer does is it fills up the uh, serum with charges, so you can hold a maximum of 16 charges. But the more charges you put in there, the worse the quality gets. So once this has been charged up to 16, you take it out of there, put it in the purifier. The purifier then brings that quality up to excellent quality. Now, as you can see, both of these require the DNA, the liquid DNA to run. So I have mine just passing through a small tank here, just so that I've got a bit of a buffer. This, you'll see, here we go, this is now using up a little bit, so it's 100 millibuckets every time uh, an operation is done on that on that B. So this will now have run through, that's not telling me, one charge. So you can see there in the tooltip it says tooltip.one charge, that's obviously a small bug with how it's displaying. And then we go two charges, that's two charges is correct. And over here you'll see this has now dropped down again, another 100 millibuckets. So you will need quite a bit of DNA. As I said before, you need to just start breeding those drones and getting stacks of drones to begin with. It's the easiest way of getting uh, liquid DNA. So back over here, we've already used one charge. Now I should have scanned this before putting it in so that we can see the progress, but unfortunately uh, I didn't, and this is halfway through, so I don't want to interrupt it now. Let me just grab from my bag the Bealizer. Get some extra space. Yep, we do have some honey in there, so that's good. So once this gets turned into our resilient species, um, we will also need the water one to combine it with. So what I'm going to do is while that's cooking, back across at my magic island, I'm going to show you another block, the alveary. So <clears throat> these three you would have seen running these, uh, well actually these two you would have seen running since the last time I showed these, I've actually put in a third alveary with uh, the refined drones to get more fuel out of them. But I've also got this one here, which is sort of a plain, you know, three by three by three uh, alveary block with wood slabs on the top. But I've got these two mutator blocks down the bottom and they can take an item. Now you can put everything from, uh, you need raw uranium ore, uh, I, nether stars can go in there, but they're very, very strong. So I tend to avoid using nether stars just because A, they're harder to get, and B, if you over mutate your bees, they will actually get destroyed. They end up with a little dash after their name once they've bred, and that means that the princess has got a very limited lifespan, uh, and we definitely don't want that at all. Uh, and as you can see down here, lots of seed oil, fuel tanks full, finally getting some oil over there. So our last experiments were, were good as well. If you want to see anything about this, watch the, the previous episodes on, uh, on how this setup works. So, ah, that's what I came down here for. So we're going to use, for our crossing, we're going to use these Eyes of Ender. Uh, I can't remember the percentage chance these give, it's 10 or 20% each additional chance to mutate. But I found that they are one of the more reliable ways of mutating. And I use two blocks. So we'll put two of them in there and two of them in there. And this will use, whether there's a cross or not, it will use up one of these and one of these with every breed. So let's have a look at our Lapis B. Yep, so 5%. So we've got a very small chance, so adding those two in will uh, hopefully boost that to close to 100%. Close enough for us anyway. Here we have our water drone that I said we were going to need. I've been, I've been you know, putting these through again and again, just like the other ones, to build up the numbers of drones. And now all we need is our resilient princess, which if we jump back through here, our inoculator should hopefully, yep, it's finished. So now we have a resilient princess. This has got used only two charges. We were really lucky. It just took uh, once for each of those traits. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually scan this now. So let's just scan both of them. So here we go. This is the resilient princess. A short lifespan, slowest speed, uses rocks for pollination. Now fertility one, this is where we might get into a little bit of trouble. When you're trying to do a cross, you want as many drones out the other side as you can. 
Now, thanks to some other things that I've scanned, I think the forest bee has, where is it? High fertility. So high fertility means three drone offspring. So what I'm actually gonna do now is I'm gonna throw this resilient princess back through. I'm gonna put the high fertility serum in to make sure we get three drones out of that at the end. Now the water has two. Two should be enough. I, I don't know whether it takes the offspring from the princess or the drone or some mix of the two. So I'm going to I'm going to basically only do this one to uh, to high fertility. Now over here, we're nearly done with the charges. And as you can see, the quality has gone to awful quality. So once that's up to 16, we're going to throw it into here and purify it up to excellent purity. We're using quite a bit of liquid DNA. Uh, you don't get anywhere near this sort of back out from your from your drones. So that's why I said you really need to get those drones scanning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this here. I'm just going to quickly cut this video and we'll come back once this bee is inoculated. See you in a sec. Okay, and we're back. And as you can see, we got lucky with this one as well. Only two charges to get that through to high fertility. And we'll just give it a quick scan. Now, once you've scanned it once, it doesn't use any more honey to rescan it, even if the traits have changed, which is good. So as you can see, fertility here, three drones, three drones. So hopefully that will give us a lot more drones out the other side, which gives us a greater chance for uh, having one of those drones being the lapis bee that we, that we want it to be. Uh, the beatific effect has now got full 16 charges of awful quality. We'll uh, throw it in there to get purified. And that used... Yeah, a lot of a lot of liquid DNA doing that. Now, the other thing that's worth mentioning at this point is, as well as making sure that your uh, drones are up and things like that, in the second tab, there is the climate. So normal, normal, and this can tolerate being either above or below by one or above or below by one for humidity. Now, that's good for where we're breeding, but sometimes you get a bee that needs to be either in the nether or... Uh, needs to be in an ocean biome. So if we look, for example, I know the ocean bee. Now the ocean bee crosses the water and the diligent with a 10% chance, but see how it's in red. And when you hover over it, the hive needs to be in the ocean in order to do the cross. So you must cross these two by putting the apiary or alveary in the ocean biome. It can be above water. It doesn't need to be in the actual ocean. It just needs to be in that biome. Uh, likewise, I know if we look at the sinister bee, the sinister bee needs to be in nether-like environments. Now, to me, that means I think you can get it done in the desert. I'm not sure. I tend to just do it in the nether anyway because uh, it's a lot easier to do. And these things, these modest princesses and the sinisters, they need hot temperature and they normally don't tolerate going down to normal. So the way of getting around that anyway is once you've once you've isolated a lot of bees and you end up with a chest that looks like this, full of serums, you can get things like, here we go, temperature tolerating five in each direction and humidity tolerating five in each direction. Now there's a trick for getting those. The maximum you can get out of natural bees, I think, is only two in each direction. Uh, but there is a machine called an acclimatizer uh, and you can get a both uh, a both one B like a, a rocky drone I think is the one that I used and once you get a rocky drone you can throw it in the acclimatizer and just keep throwing sand in it and that'll change it to both five and then the humidity one one of them sand and one of them's uh, snow or, or you know blocks of snow so or, or ice either or uh, so you can get both of those out to both five I won't show you how to do that I'm sure you can figure out how to get an acclimatizer and throw them in there. I will say it doesn't, it does take a very long time and it doesn't look like it's working a lot of the time. So automating that process is uh, well worth it for that. And these two here, they'll save you from having to move your apiary to a million different biomes, just trying to get the right cross. So anyway, now that we've got our, now that we've got our resilient princess and our, our drone, we can go back now we make sure we've got our two eyes of ender. Now one each of these is going to get used up in this cross. So we've got resilient and water. They're going to go in. 
Now, because they've got mutator blocks, I think this shortens the life of this as well. So hopefully this will uh, go down pretty quickly. So I'm going to, I'll actually cut the video here as well, and we'll come back in a second once this uh, cycle is finished. See you in a sec. Okay, and we are back and our cycle is finished. As you can see, we got three drones out there, one water drone, two stacking lapis drones, and our lapis princess, as well as some rocky combs. So it looks like uh, putting that extra fertility thing in was really good. If we'd only had uh, one drone offspring, we may have only got a water drone out of it, which is definitely not what we were after. Now let's just jump out and have a quick scan. Ooh, not quite a purebred. We got a lapis with resilient. And we have purebred lapis drones. Uh, unfortunately, only one offspring though. So with one offspring, we're never going to be able to increase our count of drones. So that is not something that we're after. So what I might do from here is, first of all, we're not going to want to mutate these anymore. We're, uh, we're only going to want to get this stable so much like the process that we did last time uh, we're going to want to get the stable but before we do that before we do the breed we want to inoculate both of these bees or all three of these bees actually uh, let's just check that again one and three so it looks like lapis by default only gives you one offspring so we're definitely going to want to put those three so we're going to do all three of these and we're going to make them high fertility so into our inoculator again let's put kill all three of them up throw our high fertility in now remember last time we put this in here this is now 16 charges excellent quality uh, and we've used yeah all of our dna that pipe up there is probably a bit empty now as well and we're going to recharge our resilient species back up so we'll put the other two charges back in there and then purify that let's put our beatific effect back just in case we want to use it later on and then this once we have these all set to high fertility because these are two purebred lapis drones if we put this princess with one of them to begin with hopefully we'll get the same thing out and we'll start getting these drones uh, stacking. Much the same as we did the other one. The only difference is we are using this high fertility serum in between to help steer our outcome to what we want it to be. Now it's also worth noting that if you use a fertility serum or if you use any serum on a queen, it will let you do it. You can get that, but a queen has a lot more going on than a princess. So when you see your your bee that has you know active and inactive when you inoculate a queen the queen also has an active and an inactive but there's also another two completely hidden traits and they're from the drone that it was originally bred with so even if you force a queen to have you know three fertility three fertility there is a very good chance that your offspring will still not have three because they're, they're the other two columns that are that are hidden in a queen. Uh, and that is because a queen is a combination of a princess and a drone. And each one of those has two traits. So two plus two equals four. Pretty simple maths there. Uh, so as a general rule, don't ever use the inoculator on a queen. Uh, you can use the inoculator on a queen, but you will get unpredictable results. Uh, it's sort of own, an emergency use only. I'll let you uh, figure out what those emergencies might be. So I'm going to leave this video here. Uh, if you want to see how these stabilize, uh, just the previous video on uh, bee breeding did a bit of the stabilization thing. It's much the same process from here on in, getting these to be stable. Just in between each breed, you may want to have a quick scan, make sure you've got the traits you want. So this, this princess is now finished. It only needed one pass, and that's because if you remember, the inactive is already set to three, so it's just brought the active one up to three as well. Uh, and then I'll do those two drones. So that's it from me this time. Uh, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.